Hello, welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen, and today I'm not making soap. I'm gonna be making solid lotion bars, which are so wonderful. They're easy to carry in your purse. They're super easy to use. They're great for elbows and um, just dry skin. Uh, and I have a special recipe that I'll be sharing in the description box below that is a non-greasy recipe. And a couple of reasons it's not greasy is that I add carrot powder I got this at Nature's Garden. Um, it's wonderful for your skin, and it also, because it's a powder, it cuts down on the greasy feel. And the other additive, just a little, I add arrowroot powder. Um, and it's sort of like a cornstarch feeling. It's arrowroot, ground up, and it takes uh, the greasiness, the greasy feel out of a lotion bar. Because some people don't like them because they can feel kind of tacky. This doesn't. It feels silky. It absorbs quickly into your skin. Uh, it's a great recipe. Anyway, and I got these adorable little molds um, on Amazon, this little cavity mold. And it has little bees in there, which I think is so cute because this does have beeswax in it. And I get mine uh, from a local apiary. Uh, it's just great. And I actually made my own beeswax once. I got some honeycomb from a friend. They had had some hives and they got rid of them and they had all this comb. And so I um, boiled it and did all, not boiled it, but you know, I did the whole rigmarole to extract the beeswax. Boy, that was a lot of work. So I understand why beeswax is so expensive. It is very time intensive and labor intensive to get a good, clean, pure beeswax. So anyway, that's gonna be part of the recipe. For my fragrance, I wanted to use this mint chocolate from Nurture Soap. Oh, this smells so good. And I'm not gonna go real heavy. I'm gonna go on the lightest um, percentage for the volume that I'm doing. I just want a little chocolatey because this does have cocoa butter in it, the recipe. Um, so I just thought that scent was really universally delicious. So I'm gonna get everything pulled together and I will uh, bring you along step by step as we make these wonderful skin nourishing, moisturizing lotion bars. All right, I'm gonna show you a little bit of the prep work for these lotion bars, but I talked about the beeswax that I made. I wanted to show you this chunk. Um, it is hard as granite. I mean, it just has a little, it's not soda ash, but dust on it. But this is the beeswax that I actually made, um, and I put it in a milk carton for my mold. So just, I mean, this is so hard. It's like a piece of hard wood. Um, and then if you buy it in big chunks, it, it'll usually come in a big block like this. I do make beeswax candles, and so I don't mind the big chunks. But for lotion making, that's really pesky. You grate it, and it's so sticky, it'll kind of mess up your grater. You get a cheap one at Walmart if you want. So what I have, um, I chunked off, I, I, this bowl is designated for beeswax and I just melt it in the microwave and then pour off what I need. And when it's done, um, I will save my big chunks for my candles and for lotion bars in the future, I will be buying the little pastelis, the little teeny, um, they're just so easy to measure and deal with. Um, so I recommend the small little beeswax pastels, pastelis, however you say it. But anyway, for the prep work, I've got my 91% rubbing alcohol, and I'm going to mist everything and wipe it down. I've got my gloves on. I'm going to rub those. Everything that I'm using, because these are for sale. If you watched my lotion video um, a while ago, I didn't have gloves on because um, it was just for my personal batch that I was showing you how I made it. This is going to be for retail. So I'm going to spritz this. I kind of let the alcohol sit. Um, and sit for a minute and then I have a clean paper towel here and I'm just going to wipe everything out and then when uh, the lotion bars are made I will do this with the tins that I put them in. I will wipe them out with alcohol, let them air out and get rid of that alcohol smell and it, you know, it dissolves, or not dissolves, it um, evaporates. That's the word. It evaporates very quickly because of the high alcohol content. Um, but everything very sanitary is what we're going for. Um, so this is really important and if this is if you have OCD <laughs> or if you like things to match I'm sorry my gloves don't match I had one left of these terrible gloves that I bought that I'll never buy again because they're big and baggy um, so I couldn't waste it I gotta use it so that's why my gloves don't match sorry if that bothers you I apologize <laughs> it bothers me but I don't like to waste. So anyway, everything's all cleaned off. I have my stainless steel surface here that I've already wiped down really well. 
We'll be back in a minute when we're ready with the ingredients. So what we've got going here is I've got coconut oil in here. Um, these little cavities hold about one ounce of lotion bar stuff. And so I have 12 cavities that I need to fill. So this is gonna be about a 12 ounce recipe that I'm doing. So you'll have to figure out yours. But what the proportions are is equal parts of three different oils, two hard and one soft and then one and a half parts of beeswax to harden it. So I'm doing three ounces of coconut oil, and then I'm gonna split up my, or I'll do three ounces of, um, I'm gonna split up my shea, this is shea butter. So I'm gonna do an ounce and a half of shea and an ounce and a half of cocoa butter. And I'm calling, those are my two hard oil portions, even though I'm splitting it. You, can, you could use mango butter, any hard oils, coconut, mango, shea, cocoa, you know. So we're going up, here's my, and cocoa butter is kind of like beeswax where it's rock hard, and so these are from Wholesale Supply Plus, Crafter's Choice, these wafers, it's a really good price, and they're so easy to deal with, I love them. Oops, so much easier than trying to, hack away at a large block of cocoa butter, which is just rock hard. Okay, and I'll do a little more shea here. There we go. So I've got six ounces of hard butters in there. And now I'm going to do three ounces of liquid oil. And let me show you what I've got for that. I have jojoba oil, and I'm going to do some almond oil. And those are going to be my soft oils. I'll do three ounces. I'm going to combine them to get up to three ounces. You could do hemp oil. You could do walnut oil, olive oil, um, really any liquid oil that you want for your nutrients, your skin food in yours. <laughs> so I'm going to tear this out, and we'll do about one and a half ounces of jojoba. I just found a deal on these little jars. Normally I get the big um, the big jars like this, but I found a great deal on these, so that's why I have these little pesky little bottles. So there you go. One and a half. And then we'll bring it up to three with my almond oil. Soper's Choice is a great resource for bulk oils. Love that company. Uh, can't recommend them highly enough. They are amazing. And they have great prices. Even if you have to pay freight shipping, which I do, uh, it still factors out to be a great price. So Soper's Choice is a great resource. Here are my officially weighed out oils. And now with three ounces, I'm going to go one and a half. I'm going to do four and a half ounces of my beeswax that I've melted in here. And because the beeswax is so hot, it's going to start melting these down, which is great. There we go. And I may have to pop this into the microwave for just a little. The beeswax is really warm, so it's going to start to work on those. I don't want to overheat the shea butter and the cocoa butter because they can get grainy if you do. Um, but I'm not going to like heat this to super hot. I just really want to get it kind of warming up because this glass was cool. You can see it kind of hardening the beeswax. So I'm going to just warm this up a little and I'll show you the next ingredients we'll put in there. Actually, before I do, you don't even have to measure this. I get this vitamin E oil. You can get it in bulk at Soper's Choice. It's great. Um, I don't even measure this. I just kind of do a zhuzh, <laughs> a zhuzh, a squeeze, you know, a nice little that is probably, we'll call it a quarter teaspoon, is about what I put in there of vitamin E oil. Love how that feels in my lotion bar, so I always put a little vitamin E oil in there. Let me go warm this up and we will come on back. So I just warmed this up a little. There's still just a few chunks of cocoa butter and shea butter in there that's just getting melted up. And this is just a little paper um, lollipop stick that you can get at a craft store. They make great uh, 
great stir sticks and they are recyclable and compostable and all that because they're paper so um, that's what that is so let's move on to the next ingredients um, before I tear this out and put the fragrance in I'm going to show you my powdered ingredients so I've got my carrot powder here and the things that the carrot powder um, and the arrowroot does being powders is they kind of cut down on the tacky feel. This is a quarter of a teaspoon measurement. It doesn't take a lot. Um, and the carrot powder is kind of chunky, so I just run it through the sieve because you don't want chunks in there, obviously. Um, but so they cut down on the shiny sort of greasy feel, but and then also the additive of the carrot powder is wonderful. Um, skin benefits. It's chock full of vitamins and uh, it's great on skin. So I'm going to do a quarter teaspoon of the carrot powder, a quarter teaspoon of arrowroot, and just kind of run it through the sieve here because you want it all super smooth. Okay, and we'll just get that stirred in here. And then uh, for the fragrance that I'm using today, I ran it through the fragrance calculator on the website. Nurture Soap has a fragrance calculator on there for each of their fragrances. Um, and it said for lotions at a rate of 2%. So 2% of 12 ounces is 0.24 ounces. And I'm going to go a little shy. I don't want this to have a super dominant scent because the beeswax and the cocoa butter actually have a really nice just natural fragrance and it comes through the bar you don't even need to fragrance this at all so definitely you could go just plain up and it would still have just a really nice pleasant fragrance to it so I'm just going to do 0.2 ounces so that's just a touch of that to give it a, just bump up that chocolatey smell and the mint just adds a little dimension to it I think it smells great it's not going to be dominantly chocolate, you know, where it's going to be like a perfume bar. You could make a perfume bar, but that's not what we're doing today. <laughs> I just want it to smell nice. All right, make sure all that powder is fully blended in there. I'm going to put that on here and tear it out. And we will measure our, I'm going to use my little eyedropper because it's such a small amount. I don't want to shoot over going for a point two actually I might go shy of that and just see how this smells that's the nice thing about this um, it's not like soap where it goes through the saponification process and things can kind of change on the other side of that this is pretty much what it is when you make it so as you're smelling it and making it that's going to be stable that's what it is sorry I'm all out of frame here there we go that smells good I don't know that I want to add any more I may do one more dropper here. And I'm not even up to point 0.1 yet. It's not even really registering. So not a lot of fragrance. But you know what? I'm happy with that. I just basically wanted just a hint of the fragrance. I didn't want it to have a dominant smell. And these smell wonderful. Um, and the beeswax scent does come through. So that is all there is to it. I mean, how simple is that? Uh, so I'm just going to get it in the molds here and my basement where I'm working right now is very cold so these will firm up really fast I mean like within a couple of hours they're going to be cold and the stainless steel table is cold also so the whole business is chilly down here which I like but anywho let's get these poured in I'll try really hard not to drip, drip too much um, so yeah, making lotion, whether it's liquid lotion or solid bars, sanitizing all of your equipment and your work surfaces is really important. This has no water or liquid in it, and so you don't need a preservative. There's nothing in here to um, go bad, per se. So that's why there's no preservative in this. So it's very different than making a liquid lotion or even a body butter. 
if you were putting aloe vera or water or any kind of goat milk, any liquid, you're gonna need a preservative in there, but this does not have that. And um, I just wanted to talk about the beeswax. You can do an equal part. So we did three ounces of two hard oils and one soft, three ounces each. You can do three ounces of beeswax. If you live in a cold climate, if you're up in Minnesota, Alaska, <laughs> upper you know, state Washington, do that. I am in Tennessee. Uh, and it gets hot here in the summer, and I don't want these to have too high of a melting point. I want them to stay firm even in the middle of summer. So that is why I do the um, portion and a half of the beeswax. So look at that. Perfect. Now I'm going to take my gloves off because these are done and in the mold, and I'm going to show you one that I made earlier. I ran a test batch with this fragrance just to make sure I was happy with the smell. So here it is. Isn't that adorable? It smells wonderful and it's nice and hard. Um, I'll show you. You can run your fingernail on there, but it's very firm. So, and I wanted to show you if you do a lotion bar without the powders in there, it's going to be really shiny on your skin. So I got that worked around. It's not shiny. It's got more of a silky look to it. And it's, uh, it's just wonderful, and it absorbs really quickly. It's not tacky. What I like to do with it is after I do, I do my own manicures at home with dip powder. <laughs> I love that. As I'll just run it on my cuticles like this, and then rub it in my cuticles. It's wonderful. I get a lot of, you know, just dry hands, you know, making soap. I'm in and out of water all day <laughs> between household duties and soap duties. So... But anyway, it's just, it's not shiny, it's not greasy, it absorbs quickly, so I think that this is just universally wonderful, and um, yeah, they're adorable. You can mess around with the recipe, you know, use any hard oils that you like, use any liquid oils that you like, um, make it your own. I wanted to share with you a tip on cleanup because of the beeswax, um, this is very hard to clean. So I'm going to pop this in the microwave and melt it down and wipe it out with a paper towel. And that is a tip on how to clean uh, containers that you've used beeswax in. And I'll show you how I unmold these and wrap them up. Um, and I have the labels all printed out for the tops. And I just use a online labels. And this is with the Maestro label designer that they have there. So that's how I do it. Um, Avery.com has a great label designer also that I've used. So literally, whoops, just flip these upside down and give them a little poke. It's about all it takes. And again, Make sure your work surface is cleaned and everything, but uh, there they are, adorable. Mm, they smell good, barely even any fragrance, just a little, just to heighten that cocoa butter smell that I think is wonderful. Um, but you can go any direction you like with that. That's what I love about these, is they're just so versatile. Anyway, let me show you how I proceed. So these are all sanitized with my rubbing alcohol. And I, what I have here is these are just natural, unbleached um, coffee filters. And I like to put one of these in because these are a little loose in there and I don't want them to get bonked up. And if they, you know, if I get in the really humid weather and there is any tendency to sweat at all, this will just um, keep them nice and clean. So I just center it on there, put my little lotion bar in and poke it down okay and then I take the extra I just sort of gather it take the extra and give it a little haircut that's how I do it and uh, tuck them over and put a lid on so that's just in there 
keeps it nice and um, it doesn't bounce around. Put the lid on, and get my label. Center it up. And there it is.